And joining us for more is Itzhak Levinon, former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations in Geneva and the ambassador to Egypt, now an associate at the International Institute for Counterterrorism, and he joins us from Herzliya. Mr. Ambassador, thanks for coming back. It's I mean, the timing is unbelievable. It's almost exactly a year to the day that Saad Hariri was forced out of office by protesters. Now he's coming back, we think, because his predecessor failed to form a government. Will Hariri be able to, first of all, even form a new government? Now, look, the, uh, the demonstrations that we have seen today, uh, I think this is the remnants of uh, the revolution who started a year ago. But this revolution, uh, we have to admit it, has failed completely. Uh, fine, you know, at the beginning, they changed the prime minister, which incidentally, the same one as now, Hariri, but they failed also to reach any kind of their objectives. Now that the situation is deteriorating more and more, there is no other candidate than Hariri to come back and to establish a new government. The situation also changed since the French president intervened personally and actively with what we call the roadmap, the French roadmap or the French initiative, in order to introduce basic reform in Lebanon. And this, Hariri is ready to do it, and this is what he said this morning when he was asked to form the government. So he will have six months from now. I think it will not go beyond that that he will, should start this reform in all levels, in everywhere, in order uh, to save the economic situation in Lebanon and to attract, let's say, foreign investors or help from international institutions in order to save the dire economic situation. There is the political side, but I think that he took for himself six months in order to deal with the economic situation with experts in his government, a non-partisan government. Right. Now, uh, Lebanese politics, uh, for for those of us who are not experts in it, really seems confusing. It looks like some of the parties that backed Hariri when he first came to power, that were then the opposition, the especially the Free Patriotic Movement, now is against him and Hezbollah, which had been against him, now seems, from what we understand, be willing to accept him as prime minister. Explain to us how this, these turnabouts have happened. Well, first of all, there is no a consensus around the Mr. Hariri. There is a majority, yes, 65 members of the parliament out of 118. Basically, it's 120, 28, but you have six or seven who has resigned already. So he has the majority, but this is not the consensus. Secondly, the, the internal domestic uh, game, let's say, between the different forces, this is a question of interest. Nothing more than that. When the interest of Hezbollah meets the request of Hariri to reform and to increase the income uh, to, uh, to, to Lebanon, this goes together with the interest of Hezbollah, and this is why Hezbollah is indirectly supporting him. When it comes to the Christians, and the Christians don't believe that the same person who was hosted one year ago, because he failed to do something better than he did at the time, they are not supporting him. So this is a question of interest, which might change all the time. We have seen before that the President Aoun asked him to uh, uh, create this government, to, uh, to have the new government. Not all the factions, the ethnic factions, supported Hariri. But incidentally, after the 65 members, the majority of the parliament, we have seen all the others, whether they are supporting or at least they are not objecting. And this is how he had the possibility now to be nominated for that. And we have to wait and see when this government will be created. In, uh, I mean, in my mind, according to my assessment, uh, because of the dire situation, because of the urgency, I think that this time, and contrary to what happened in previous time, this government is going to be established relatively very fast.
All right. Well, let me ask you, Assad, every area initially was seen as fairly close to Saudi Arabia, at least until that strange episode where he was uh, reportedly almost sort of kidnapped or held hostage there uh, uh, in, in Riyadh. Uh, now, of course, Saudi Arabia has shifted in the past year, taking more and more uh, a stance closer to Israel. Of course, Lebanon now opening negotiations with Israel over not the maritime border. Is Saad Hariri a, a figure that that Israel would feel maybe more comfortable in that position than some of his uh, some of his peers. At this particular time, Saad Hariri is going with the French president because there is the French initiative, because there is the readiness of the French president to help, because there are foreigners who is uh, they are interested to invest. So today, Hariri for the coming six months is with the French initiative, with the French uh, government and president. This doesn't mean that he divorced the Saudis. The Saudis, they have one aim. They will fully support Hariri without any hesitation if he will take care of Hezbollah, if he will reduce the influence in Hezbollah, if he will uh, ask Hezbollah, you know, not uh, to be involved in regional conflict, etc. So the Saudis are expecting from Hariri to be the intermediary with Hezbollah in order to reduce the influence of this organization. If he will succeed, he will have the full support of the Saudis. If not, he will hear from the Saudis some critics. All right. If he would succeed in uh, somewhat reducing the influence of Hezbollah, or let's let's just say restraining, maybe the better word in this case. Yeah. Certainly, that is something that would benefit certainly Israel, uh, maybe at least indirectly, or maybe not as his primary purpose, but certainly it Hopefully. would benefit it would benefit Israel, uh, Ambassador.